Growing up in a small Virginia town near the mountains right on the border of West Virginia, Zane heard all kinds of stories from his grandmother. Tales of mountain lions who could transform into ghostly women, the Tailypo, a fluffy rodent-like creature on an endless quest to get its tail back from the hunter who took it, the Mothman that appeared with glowing red eyes to warn of impending tragedy. Most of all, she warned him about the deer. Sometimes, she used to say, when you're out in the woods late at night, you'll see a deer acting a little bit funny. Maybe it's making strange sounds. Maybe it's standing up like a man. Maybe it's staring at you from the shadows and won't look away. If you ever see one of these deer, promise me you'll get away from it as fast as possible. Don't look at it. Don't talk to it. Just get far, far away. He promised her every time. But as he got older, he started to forget his grandma's stories, letting them fade away with memories of the Easter Bunny and Santa Claus. He didn't think about the stories again until he was older, a junior in college and embarking on a camping trip with his roommate Josh. They were both staying with Zane's family for the summer and had been enjoying the sunshine and fresh air. They'd gone hiking, picked blackberries, and gone fishing to their heart's content. After a while, they got sick of sleeping in the cramped house and decided to have a proper camping trip out in the mountains. Campsites were crowded this time of year, but Zane knew a spot just isolated enough that they could kick back, enjoy nature, and relax in peace. They packed their supplies and headed out into the forest for a weekend they would never forget. By nightfall, Zane and Josh had pitched their tents, built a fire, and were starting to make some dinner. They roasted hot dogs and heated cans of beans over the fire and decided to start telling some classic scary stories. Sitting by the crackling fire, listening to the rustling leaves, snapping twigs, and the chittering of animals all around, Zane couldn't help but remember the stories he had almost forgotten. All of the strange, inexplicable things that came out after the sun went down and the forest went quiet. He thought he could hear the footsteps of something walking by their campsite, circling them. But it was probably just his imagination. As Josh told stories about babysitters stalked by killers and drivers picking up ghostly hitchhikers, Zane was thinking about the deer. He shuddered but shook it off, and after some more stories and a few too many s'mores, the two friends decided to get some sleep. After several hours, Zane woke to the sound of Josh unzipping his tent. He sat up, ready to yell at his friend for waking him up, but the sight of Josh's pale, frightened face stopped him. There's something here, was all Josh could say. His hands, Zane noticed, were shaking. Hey man, it's, it's okay, let's check it out. Zane patted Josh on the shoulder. He was pretty sure his friend just wasn't used to camping in actual nature, but reached for his hunting knife just in case. He grabbed a flashlight and switched it on, following Josh out into the darkness. He swept the beam across the clearing, and it illuminated a pair of orange eyes staring directly at him from behind a nearby tree. What the? He approached the shape, trying to get a clear look at it. As it became more illuminated, his stomach dropped. It was a deer, but something was wrong with it. Its mouth was wide open, its jaw working up and down like it was trying to make a sound, but nothing came out. But that wasn't the worst part. As the flashlight beam illuminated the animal's body, Zane realized that somehow, its head was on backwards. What the? Josh appeared behind him gasping. Shh! Zane shushed him intensely. He suddenly remembered his grandmother's warnings. You know what? I don't feel so great. I think we should go back to the car and head to my place. He gave Josh a look, shaking his head as if to say, don't say another word. By the glow of their flashlights, the two packed up their campsite, all under the gaze of the misshapen deer. They drove home in silence, Josh only speaking once to ask, what was that thing? Zane shook his head, I don't know, but it wasn't a deer. They crept back into the house and went to bed. They knew they would never speak of tonight ever again. As Zane began to drift off to sleep, his last conscious thought was to glance out the window. There in the yard, not five feet away, was a deer watching. He didn't know it. But that night, Zane encountered an instance of SCP-6448. SCP-6448 is an anomalous species of creatures that appear to belong to the Cervidae family, nicknamed the Not Deer. They are highly intelligent and can be distinguished from ordinary deer by unusual behavior and physical deformities. Some of these have included legs that bend backwards, the eyes of an animal other than deer, 
forward-facing eyes, jerky movements, lack of fear towards humans, and walking on two hind legs. Most notably, and most frightening, SCP-6448 instances will watch and stalk humans for a duration of hours or even days. They will follow humans home and steal items from their domains including weapons, food, and other personal items. They are most frequently found in the deep woods at night, when a person is completely alone. If someone encounters an instance of SCP-6448, if they acknowledge any of the creature's anomalous traits, it will attack. In order to limit the loss of life and ensure that the SCP Foundation employees exercise the utmost caution when dealing with SCP-6448, the Cryptozoology Division issued the following guidelines. If you notice a deer that seems off, look away and ignore it. If it knows that you've noticed it, it's too late. If you hear your name, whistling, or something else in the woods calling for you, don't acknowledge it. Never acknowledge it exists. Don't respond. Don't go looking for it. Don't call back to it. If you're walking at night and you feel something breathing on your neck or whispering behind you, the key to your safety is pretending that everything is normal. Your survival is dependent on your ignorance. Whatever SCP-6448 is, they appear to be intelligent enough to understand when they are being studied, and they don't seem to like it very much. On January 11, 1994, a group of three SCP-6448 instances broke into Site-41 in North Carolina, using a tunnel they had carved over a long period of time. At the time, there was an instance in containment, but in all of the chaos of the breach, the specimen was lost. Every time an instance was captured and contained near SCP-6448's habitat, it would later escape via similar tunnels. SCP-6448 was officially classified by the SCP Foundation in 1980, but those from the Appalachian region have known about these strange creatures since at least 1947. From folktales and campfire stories to secondhand and even firsthand encounters, the locals are aware of the not deer's existence and are largely familiar with the precautions necessary to avoid them. Though many of the civilians that encounter SCP-6448 avoid notifying the authorities, there have been several recorded 911 calls involving the not deer since 2000. The following is a log of those calls. February 1st, 2000. Victim, age 41 female, dialed emergency services after hearing their name being called from the woods near their home. The victim recounts the vocalization being likened to a scream in a voice that they do not recognize and requested assistance in locating the source. Emergency personnel requested the subject place their phone on the floor outside the home to listen for the alleged sounds. After two minutes, a vocalization was heard that was calling to the subject by name, emanating from the nearby forest. The subject was instructed to investigate the disturbance themselves and keep services updated on the situation. The victim then began to walk into the woodland, getting about 50 meters into the underbrush before inexplicably stopping. They claim there to be a noticeably large deer standing in the way of the path. She begins to walk closer, though states it does not move. Subject diverts from the path and begins walking in a different direction. After 30 minutes, no source of the voice is determined. The caller returns to their residence. June 13, 2002. Victim, age 28, male, calls 911 regarding a home break-in. The caller notes numerous items to be missing from their residence and requests an investigation. Operators dispatch two investigators to visit the home and, and pertain a potential perpetrator. The pair note that, based on earlier CCTV images, all cutlery, sharp objects, firearms, light bulbs, and a single copy of the novel The Day After Roswell are missing. Also noted is that there is a complete lack of any fingerprints at the scene, with no doors or windows having been broken into. Analysis of the home's CCTV footage revealed there to be a two-hour period of missing film, with the exception of a single frame containing a service nippon on its hind legs reaching towards the camera. Its frontal hooves have been warped to resemble fingers. No footage of the entity exiting the home was discovered. November 19, 2005 a cattle farmer, age 54 male, reported to local authorities the sudden disappearance of over 30% of his largest herd. Response teams searched the nearby area for four hours, though found no trace of his cattle. 
The victim was recommended to set up trail cameras and note any unusual activity overnight. At 1.11 a.m., two SCP-6448 are seen walking through the field before fleeing. One places an object into the ground, later discovered to be a single fork. A week after this discovery, 200 discarded bovine hooves appear at the location. March 4, 2009. Victim, age unknown, gender unknown. Dials 911 to request assistance from animal services. The victim is standing within a forest in front of a service elephus, which is violently contorting. The victim attempts to state, you better get a vet or something, I don't think it's well, before a piercing screech is heard and the line falls silent. Recovered footage depicts the aforementioned animal squirming, seemingly in pain. A vicious churning is audible as a black mass erupts out of the instance, and the video turns to static. October 11, 2012. Victim, age 23 male, is a junior wildlife officer at the Cherokee National Forest, Tennessee. They radio their supervisor in the early morning regarding a herd of Odicolius virginius within the reserve. Supposedly, there is a single animal that, upon first glance, appears average, though possesses divergent attributes, including backwards joints, enlarged abdomen, and forward-facing eyes. Upon stating this, a distant whistle is audible, and the victim stumbles slightly. They begin to say, What the? Did it just whistle at me? Before the sound of hooves rapidly getting closer is heard. Notably, the hoofsteps did not sound to be in the traditional gallop of a cervid. October 12, 2012. The former victim's supervisor calls authorities following the victim's absence from the reserve night shift. Following this, their radio begins to crackle. The victim's voice can be heard on the other end, and he requests the supervisor's attention. He calls regarding a herd of Odicolius virginius within the reserve. They claim there is a single animal that upon first glance appears average, though possesses divergent attributes including backwards joints, enlarged abdomen, and forward-facing eyes. Suspecting the creature to be a rare genetic malformation, the victim requests their supervisor to come to the location. The supervisor questions the victim about what happened the night previous. There is no reply. Upon the supervisor's and law enforcement's arrival at the site, a herd of approximately 80 Odicolius virginius was present. A single entity is in the field center and appears to be standing separate from the rest of the group. It flees the scene upon realizing the law enforcement's presence. Where it formerly stood lay a standard two-way radio. April 8, 2016. Victim, age 35 female, dials 911 using a satellite phone distressed. They state they are in Redacted. County Woods and are being followed. She claims that despite seeing no one for the duration of her hike, she quote, feels as if she's being watched and has heard someone walking behind her at various points in the trip. The victim is unable to give an adequate description of their location, but knows the route to return to her residence. Operators request the victim to return to a point wherein she can provide a sufficient geographic description of her position. The victim remains on the line for the duration of the hike back to a readily used portion of the wilderness trail. Along the journey, various unnatural sounds can be heard. These include footsteps, rock slides, coughing, whispering, and whistling. Nearing the main trail, all woodland noises such as birds and wind cease suddenly, and the victim states she can see a malformed deer carcass coated in a thick layer of black slime. At this time, human screams can be heard in the distance. Operators request the victim continue and ignore the other stimuli. Agents embedded in local law enforcement, suspecting SCP-6448 involved, notify Gamma-4 to the situation. Twenty minutes later, the victim returns to the main trail. Gamma-4, now operating the 911 call, informs the victim not to respond to any further unusual activity and briefly outlines service protocol. For the duration of the victim's journey to her home, two sets of breathing are audible. The victim successfully returns to her residence and shuts the door behind her. Now out of sight from SCP-6448, agents inquire of the victim's address, and the victim promptly complies. Operatives instruct the victim to have possession of all firearms and weapons on the premises and to barricade herself inside a safe space with one exit point. The victim swiftly begins grabbing all available weapons and throwing them inside a wardrobe. It is at this time there is a knock on the front door. The victim does not respond and continues to hoard sharp objects from kitchen drawers. The knocking becomes more violent as the handle is jostled and is shaken incessantly. A voice on the other side repeats the phrase, Hello, it is me. Hello, let me in. 
in a calm manner as the door begins to shake. The victim retreats to her wardrobe, armed with a small firearm. Upon sealing herself in the space, the knocking ceases, and footsteps can be heard becoming further away. The sound of galloping is audible as the front door caves in. Hoofsteps can now be heard inside the home. The entity continues to repeat, Hello, it is me. Hello, let me in, as it searches the small building. A bright light flashes overhead, seemingly circling the house. Eventually, the entity enters the victim's bedroom. Through a small slit in the wardrobe door, the victim can see a Cervus canadensis standing on its hind legs and surveying the room. Its movements are crooked and stiff, seeming to struggle to stand in a bipedal fashion. It slouches down to a quadrupedal crouch, similar to the stance of an arachnid. It inhales heavily, and its head locks on the view of the wardrobe. It is noted as possessing human eyes. It scampers towards the subject and opens the door. A single gunshot is heard. Responders found no trace of either SCP-6448 or the victim. Containment of SCP-6448 is focused on the investigation of any deer exhibiting anomalous traits in and around the Appalachian area. Any civilian sightings of SCP-6448 are to be handled by Mobile Task Force Gamma-4 or the Green Stags. Any possible deaths resulting from SCP-6448 will be blamed on hiking accidents, and any reported sightings can be explained away with chronic wasting disease. CWD, occasionally referred to as zombie deer disease, is a prion disease affecting members of the Cervidae family. Symptoms of the illness include loss of motor function control and damage to decision-making, as well as gradual degradation of all mental faculties. It is 100% fatal. However, though the disease does exist, most recorded cases of it in the Appalachian region can actually be attributed to instances of SCP-6448. Any captured instances of SCP-6448 should be transported to Site-44 for the Cryptozoology Division's containment and study. On November 29, 2019, they finally got their chance to bring a not-deer into custody. The Green Stags were able to capture an instance of SCP-6448 with the help from MTF New 7 Hammerdown and their Heavy Vehicles Division, as well as some experimental shock rifles. One not deer was knocked unconscious in the conflict, and its body was loaded onto an armored helicopter and flown straight to Site-44 in Essex, England. At the site, it was then placed in a reinforced steel containment cell and heavily sedated. This entire process went off without a hitch. As the entity began to regain consciousness, cryptozoology specialist F. Oz watched it through a one-way glass window and attempted to speak to it through the intercom. Greetings, SCP-6448, researcher Oz began. At the sound of his voice, the creature jumped to its feet, staring at the intercom. Can you understand me? We've seen your genus speak English just fine in the past. The animal did not answer, but began licking one of its legs and behaving as if it were an ordinary deer. Researcher Oz sighed impatiently. Please, we know your secret. The not deer stopped what it was doing, freezing completely still as it listened to the words. Admittedly, it wasn't exactly well kept. If you just look at yourself for more than a few seconds, it is very clear that you're not normal. At this, the creature, which had been facing away from the window, swiveled its neck 180 degrees, breaking its own spine with an audible crack. It stared unblinking at the window and directly at Researcher Oz. Oz turned to the containment staff, suddenly anxious. I thought you said this was one way. The staff assured him that it was, and there was no way the not deer could see him. Still, its eyes were locked directly on his face. He shook off the sense of unease and continued his line of questioning. Are you something imitating deer? It is clear that if so, you possess basic anatomical knowledge of them, though details are clearly faulty. In fact, a better question would be, how, if in fact you are not what you pretend to be? The not deer opened its mouth at this, revealing unusually sharp teeth. It moved its jaw as if attempting to speak, but only a choking sound came out. <clears throat> Sh shall we move on? Oz asked. What I'm more concerned with here is why you take our people. Is it a vendetta? Spite? Food? For the first time in the interview, the not deer blinked. It was an unnatural movement forced and deliberate, like the creature was attempting to engage in an ordinary behavior rather than actually experiencing an involuntary impulse. Responding is mandatory, researcher Oz prompted. The creature did not react. If you will not comply, 
Maz's tone grew stern, frustrated. Maybe you'd like to see your brand new containment cell. At last, the entity spoke. Research. Research. Its voice resembled a distorted version of Oz's. Research? What kind of... Oz wasn't able to finish his question. July 7th, 1947, the creature said before ramming into the one-way glass and cracking it. As Oz stumbled backwards from the force, the creature collapsed on the ground, seizing and screaming as its abdomen. Get the stags in here now! Oz cried out, but it was too late. A black mass of something shiny and tendril leaped out of the knot deer, scuttling around the cell before shattering the window and leaving the empty shell of a deer behind. The Site-44 breach system activated and attempted to initiate emergency containment protocols, but the mysterious black mass escaped its sector, made its way toward the main exit, broke through the glass of the front exit door, and vanished into the shrubbery outside. The escaped anomaly could not be found and recontained. Ever since this incident, there have been a record-breaking number of chronic wasting disease cases identified in deer in the surrounding area, as well as an unprecedented increase in UFO reports. Further research is currently ongoing, but it is unknown whether we will ever truly know what these creatures are. Only one thing is for certain. They are definitely not deer. Now go check out SCP-968 Sleep Killer and SCP-2571 Cracklewood Park for more anomalies that'll ensure you'll never want to sleep again. Wait, is that a deer behind you? Oh, go!